to SJS classes. I hope you have seen the previous video lesson on the syllabus of the paper 20th century Malayalam literature in English translation and you have acquainted yourself with the syllabus, the aims and objectives, the course contents, the poets and writers that you need to confront as part of this syllabus. In this video lesson, I will be giving you a quick and short history of Malayalam literature, its development through various ages, the important contributions made by famous writers at different points of time. Malayalam is often regarded as the youngest of the four major South Indian languages of the Dravidian stock, the other languages being Tamil, Telugu and Kannada. It has a history of more than thousand years. The earliest written documents in the language are royal edicts and inscriptions dating back from the 9th century. Though the folk songs and oral narratives composed in the language in the earlier centuries could be taken to suggest a longer history, in the absence of written documents there is no way one can establish the precise character of the language before the 9th century. So the absence of documents proves an obstacle in the case of Malayalam literature as well. We confronted the same difficulty while we were analyzing literary criticism of the medieval phase. We have the same difficulty in the case of Malayalam literature as well. But from the 9th century onwards, however, there has been a steady flow of written literature in the language first as inscriptions and later from the 12th century in the form of literary works, some of them translations and adaptations from Sanskrit. This literature emerges primarily from two traditions, one indicating the continuing influence of Tamil and the other seeking a new inspiration from Sanskrit. These indeed are two schools of literature in pre-modern Malayalam, the first of which is known as Pattu tradition and the other as the Manipravalam tradition. Eruthachan, who survived during the 16th century, is often regarded as the father of modern Malayalam. In his rewriting of the Ramayana and Mahabharata in the Kilipattu style, one might come across for the first time in Malayalam a successful synthesis of several traditions of achieved under the power of poetic imagination. Eruthachan represents a confluence of diverse streams of writing, not merely of the Pattu and Manipla Manipravalam traditions. His major intervention has come in the form of the induction of bhakti into the cultural ethos of Kerala. His classic text expressing devotion to Rama and Krishna can be said to have played a key role in making bhakti an all pervasive sentiment in Kerala in his and subsequent ages. This is further indicated by the popularity of Pundanam a famous poet and a devotee of Guruvayurappan, whose devotional poetry contained especially in Jnanabhana, which means the song of divine wisdom, marks a new height for bhakti in pre-modern Kerala. Now, if you have come across this title Jnanabhana, you will understand that this is also a dedication to the god Guruvayurappan. The entire bhakti movement was centered around gods and goddesses and it was popularized by both these writers, Erithachan as well as Pundanam. The period following Erithachan and Pundanam is characterized by the proliferation of Atakadas, the literary works connected with the dance drama Kadagali. The 17th century threw up significant figures like Unai Warrior, 
whose knowledge of them though written as an artakatha to support the kadagali of that name is a, is as poetic as any work of literature produced in the earlier centuries this tradition of integrating visual culture with poetic experience is continued into the next century by kunjan nambiar his poetry led to a large scale democratization of literature along with eduthachan and cherasheri nambiya completes the ancient triumvirate of malayalam poetry and i am sure you know that we consider him as the master of malayalam satirist poetry and he is also credited with the invention of the, a new form of performing art called tullal as otan tullal as we know it it became very popular in the period as the uneducated man's alternative to the classical art traditions of kudiyattam and kadagali kunjanambiar integrated forms of folk art with elements borrowed from chakyar kutu the elite art that was performed on temple premises for the benefit of higher caste audiences tullal taken out of the temple premises and performed in secular and public places was often regarded in the period as the common man's chakyar kutu this was an important step in the process of the secularization of art and literature that was to take place in kerala in the subsequent centuries one might say that tullal brought into existence a new set of audience who looked upon art in a manner radically different from the way art was viewed till then then you come down to the malayalam literature of the 18th and 19th centuries let us look at the major developments that happened in malayalam literature during the 18th and 19th centuries after the 19th, 18th century however things changed literature is now seen to be written printed to be more precise in the language of the common man and in the syntax of everyday communication this history obviously is bound up with the, the development of modernity in 19th century kerala the expansion and dominance of prose genres in the century is to be read not as a merely literary event but as a phenomenon imbued with a great deal of social significance to see this in proper perspective one will have to consider prose in the context of a number of social developments of the 19th century including the rise and growth of social reform movements the introduction of the school system the reformist work of the christian missionaries the intrusion of the notion of every day into the universe of literature the advent of printed books newspapers and journals the evolution of new literary genres like the novel and the general move towards a secularization of the institution of literature a literary sensibility is to be understood as the crystallization of the aesthetic cultural and socio politic dynamic at work in a society at a particular moment in history and in kerala of the early 20th century this manifested as a tension between the forces of tradition and modernity so everywhere you find this the clash between tradition and modernity you have thinkers philosophers critics stating that you must subscribe subscribe to traditional notions and ideas you also have thinkers who state that blind adherence to tradition is not so good as far as literature is concerned by the end of 19th century literature was either a faded echo of the mediocre traditions in sanskrit or a copy of the language of romanticism imbibed from some of the late victorian english writers it is against this backdrop that the development of new idioms and new forms in the successive writers of the 20th century assumes significance <laughs> 
Though all literary genres were affected by the tension between tradition and modernity, it became more crucial, relatively speaking, for poetry because of the focused attention that language receives in the communication of poetic experience. We know that in poetry, diction is very important. Now, diction is what conveys your idea to your readers and diction basically means choice of words. So words, language play a significant role in poetry. We might speak of the three poets in Kumar Nashan, Ullur S. Parameshwaraya and Vallathol Narayana Menon, the more popular as Kumar Nashan, Ullur and Vallathol as the harbingers of modern spirit in complex scenario of the 20th century Malayalam poetry. The conflict between tradition and modernity realizes itself in these poets in diverse ways. They were new not merely because they sought to revamp tradition through their writings. They did attempt that, but they also gave shape to a new language that allowed them to see tradition itself differently. The new poetry that they pioneered in this sense was the outcome of a formal blending that involved the integration, intermingling and cross-fertilization of elements from a number of diverse sources such as the epics, the Puranas, the Kavyas and the more popular oral and folk narratives. So the best was achieved by intermingling of tradition and modernity. One might suggest that it was not a rejection of tradition, but a conscious effort to rebuild tradition from a new perspective that marks their modernity. So this is what you find very much new in these three writers, Kumar Nashan, Ullur and Vallathol. They were able to mingle tradition and modernity. Though we use the term romantic to describe the poetic sensibility that arose in Malayalam in the early 20th century, one would do well to remember that it is not a replication of Western romantic poetry that we see here. So please, be don't, please don't be under the misinterpretation that romanticism in Malayalam is same as the romantic movement in English literature. The diverse ways in which the romantic sensibility became indigenized, assimilated and elaborated by the writers who came after Ashan, Ullu and Vallathol attest to this. One might consider a number of poets who have extended romanticism to newer heights in the first half of the 20th century. It is the richness and diversity of the romantic ethos that one would find illustrated in the poetry of G. Shangara Kurup, P. Kunjiraman Nair, Edasheri Govindan Nair, Edapalli Raghavan Pillai, Nalapattu Balamani Amma, Changambuja Krishna Pillai and Vailopulli Sridhar Menon. Poetry now becomes more and more inclusive in terms of subject matter and formal convention. Though it was through fiction that social realism entered the horizon of Malayalam literature in the pre-independence era. There were young poets like P. Bhaskaran, Vailar Ramavarma and Oenv Kurup who extended the radical spirit of progressivism to the poetic genres and would a little later provide a more overtly political inflection to the declining voice of romanticism. So, at the beginning of 20th century, you have a declining uh, romantic spirit and you have political inclinations creeping into the realm of poetry. The term that is generally used to describe the poetry that developed after the 1950s is modernism. It is a kind of anti-romantic verse that emerged in the late 50s with the poems of Kakkad, Ayyapapanikar and Madhavan, though poets like N.B. Krishnavarir had already in the late 40s itself evolved a style of writing that was deeply ironic and anti-romantic. These poets used free verse and open forms of prose that provided a new insight into aspects of reality that the earlier poets had chosen to 
ignore. The poetic scene of the 60s represents a confluence of currents drawn from diverse sources. The poets who are active in the spirit include Akitam Achyudan Nambudri, Atur Revivarma, B. Sugata Kumari, and Vishnu Narayan Nambudri. Though all of them cannot be treated as exponents of literary modernism, there was dissatisfaction with prevailing modes of writing in all of them. There was also the evidence of a newly emerging political concern that appeared as a development within modernism and this was represented by the poetry of Kadamanita Ramakrishnan and Artu Revivarma and of the younger poets of day like Sachidanandan, Vinayachandran, Shangarapillai, Ayyappan and Baryandran Chulikad. This is what makes the 70s a political decade for Malayalam poetry comparable to the 1930s that gave rise to a distinct band brand of progressive fiction. The 70s as we know were politically turbulent years for civil society in India. It was a period that marked the end of the Nehruvian era of liberal humanism and welfare economics. Socialist and secular ideals were facing new challenges from various authoritarian and successionist forces. The high-handed and undemocratic ways that the state adopted in putting down popular struggles came as a shocking experience for the masses. The emergency of 1975 was merely a dress rehearsal for the acts of state terror that were to become common in later years in parts of the country. The marked political activism of the 70s and 80s could have been a result of all these working together. One might say that it is this heightened political sensibility that continues to dominate Malayalam poetry in today's postmodern scenario where the poet breaks consciously away from the modernist paradigm and embraces new extensions of experience that articulate strong feminist, Dalit and environmentalist concerns. Similar transformations have taken place in the fictional genres too where the movement has been from the social and documentary realism of the early writers to the formally nuanced and self-reflexive fiction of present-day writers. The fiction of such early 20th century writers like Karur Nilaganda Pillai, Keshav Dev, Vaike Muhammad Bashir, Pongundam Varki, Lelidambige Andarjanam, Tagadi Shivashangara Pillai, S.K. Pottakar and others often partook of the generic fluidity and flexibility of 19th century narratives. The attitude to reality that some of these writers expressed was not different from the colonial attitude which was enunciated a few decades earlier by Chandu Menon in his introduction to Intuliga. In fact, this attitude to reality has continued to be operative in the short stories written by most of the important practitioners of the art for decades together in the 20th century like Urub, Saraswadiyamma, Vadudala, who were active as fiction writers in both the pre-independence and post-independence days, and of such other writers as Kovilan, T. Patmanavan, C. V. Sriraman, M. T. Vasudevan Nair, and Madhavi Kuti, whose works dominate the fictional scene of the post-independence era. As in poetry, Modernism in fiction emerged in the late 50s, adopting a style of writing that was deeply ironic and anti-romantic. It brought into currency a new way of perceiving and understanding reality. For writers like O. V. Vijayan, Kakanadan, Anand, M. P. Narayana Pillai, Punnatil Kunyabdullah, M. Mugandan and Sedu, writing was essentially an asocial and apolitical experience whose meaning came primarily from its technical sophistication. As in poetry, again, one can see a reintegration of the political concern in the modernist fiction of the 70s, especially in the writings of Karunagaran, Sugumaran and a few others. There indeed is some connection between these writers and those who followed them in the 80s such as Paul Sakaria, Sarah Joseph, 
വി പി ശിവകുമാർ ആൻഡ് എൻ എസ് മാധവൻ ദ ഷോർട്ട് സ്റ്റോറി റൈറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ടുഡേ ആർ മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് എ ഡിസ് ഇൻഹെറിറ്റഡ് ജനറേഷൻ അൺഏബിൾ ടു ട്രേസ് ദ ലീനിയേജ് ബാക്ക് ഡയറക്ട്ലി ടു ദ റൈറ്റേഴ്സ് ഹു പ്രിസീഡഡ് ദം ടുഡേസ് ഷോർട്ട് ഫിക്ഷൻ റൈറ്റേഴ്സ് അറ്റ് ടൈംസ് റെഫർ ടു ആസ് പോസ്റ്റ് മോഡേണിസ്റ്റ് ആർ കോൾഡ് സോ നോട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് ദേ ഷെയർ ദ ആട്രിബ്യൂട്ട്സ് ദാറ്റ് ആർ ജനറലി അസോഷിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് വെസ്റ്റേൺ പോസ്റ്റ് മോഡേണിസ്റ്റ് but because they represent a sensibility shift in the development of malayalam short fiction their trajectory has been from a mistrust of the central tenets of modernism to expressions of anxieties about identity their identity consciousness is informed not merely by a concern for the national identity of kerala but by a new historical understanding of the self that allows them to blend literary experience questions of marginalization in terms of class caste and gender it is this sense of identity and difference that marks the short stories of ayyappan gracy chandramadi ashuda and others they along with such other writers of their generation as n prabhagaran c v balakrishnan t v kochubava K. P. Ramanunni, Ashokan Charuvel and P. Surendran are aware that their predecessors were forced to work within a tradition of colonial sensibility and that they themselves are not immune to the assault of newer forms of colonialism that come in the guise of globalization and neoliberalism. What this provides is a new understanding of politics such as in poetry, propels the present day fictionist away from the modernist paradigm to seek ways of articulating experiences that are heterogeneous and polyphonic i'm sure that most of the names that you came across while listening this video listening to this video lesson are familiar to you that is because you are born in this state and you have been confronting this language and this literature all throughout your education i hope you have a vague understanding a rough outline to malayalam literature its history and its development through various ages thank you so much for listening i'll see you in the next video lesson